coming up on this episode of Free Lunch. I'm not going to let nobody, you know, take that from me. That's fire! <laughs> You're so silly. No. But for real. Because I wasn't expecting that as your answer. Yeah. So it's like the N-word, basically. <laughs> like... <laughs> like oh we remixing this you know what I'm the N word <laughs> I'm just saying did you compare that to the N I you compared F- baby mama to <laughs> nigga nigga yeah. well, unfortunately my cousin did not make it like he committed suicide oh my and God. he he killed his wife and it's also about it's honoring the marriage it's honoring them but it's a reminder to them that you guys weren't a mistake it's Free Lunch Season 3 with a special thanks to our sponsors, Bullseye-LLC.com, Ready, Aim, Bullseye, where safety is our ammo, Gen1LLC.info, Generation 1 Logistics, taking pride in putting our carriers first and helping owner-operators get premium loads, stay organized, and increase profit, and ScarletOakCandleCo.com, the self-care experts. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Freestyle Gospel, a.k.a. W.O. Free, with another episode of Free Lunch. It's season three. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Um, really uh, off-the-hip episode today. Um, got my girl Shay Lamore in the building. Yes, sir. Give it up for Shay. What's up, y'all? What's up? What y'all doing? How y'all doing out there? They're currently tuning into this podcast mm-hmm. while they're supposed to be at work. Yeah, I bet. Working. Get um, ready. But Shay, uh, Shay is a very old uh, acquaintance of mine. Um, <laughs> yes. Another fellow serial creative, just like me. Um, tend to be drawn to other serial creatives. I mean, I just, it, we're we're like a very niche community, you know, so it's like. It's true. Not many people get us. You nah. Know? So we tend to, you know, draw to and stick with each other, you know, because <laughs> other serial creatives get it. They yes, get it. They definitely. Get it. So. You no, you you haven't turned uh, forty yet, right? No, not yet. But in May, I'll be forty yes. next month. I turn forty next year, so I'm still, you know, I'm still holding on to these thirties as long <laughs> as I can. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah, um, but interestingly enough, with you being ready to turn forty, mm-hmm. um, you know how people like have the phrase they say, uh, you know, forty's the new twenty. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Because, and I'm still not 40 yet, right? Yes. But because every time I've heard that phrase, I haven't been 40, right? Yeah. So I never really knew what that meant and what it's like. Yeah. I kind of just have my own subjective idea of what I think people mean by that. Right. And typically, it's the 40-year-old people who say that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Of course. Because it's in their benefit, right? Absolutely. (laughs) 40 is the new 20 because I want to feel forever young, I guess, or whatever. Yes. But um, now me being on the cusp of it, you even closer. You're practically 40. <clears throat> yeah. I'm just going to round it off for you. <laughs> I'm 40. I'm not trying to make you <laughs> It's not like I'm trying to make you old or anything. Like I'm, my dad said, I'm 39.99. I'm just going to call you 40. All right. Uh, Go ahead. But for, for you, when somebody says 40 is the new 20, one, do you even agree with that? Since you're semi-officially <sighs> a 40-year-old. was it, To you, is 40 the new 20? You know... I don't feel 40, so I guess I can kind of say yeah, but to be honest, like, I don't even think about those kind of numbers. Like, I just feel like I'm living my life to the best, to the fullest, so numbers... Well, what what do you think people, other people mean when they even say that? What do you, what do you think it means? I think it's... say 40s, then you're 20. I think it's more along the lines of just just being a free, young spirit. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I think... Pretty much think the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I think because when I think of what is t- what's twenty. Yeah. If if forty supposed to be the new twenty, then what w- what's been the traditional twenty? What's, right. what's the old twenty? So I guess twenty is the the or twenty one. You could say is like kind of the iconic year yeah. where people, you know, you're probably what eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Yeah. So that's probably the age where you're probably just coming out of college. Yeah. If you went to college, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's probably the age where you're coming into your own and finding, you know, finding out what you're getting ready to do with your life. It's like the start of adulthood, basically. Yeah, but what I think more than more than not is forty year olds, at least at that age, maybe they've lived so much life from twenty to forty. Yeah, uh, that maybe when forty now arrives, they're they're burnt out, they're spent maybe, and now forty becomes 
symbolic of the decline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you know, not like it's a, like a, a bad thing, but it's it's because maybe maybe you you spent a whole lot of your 20s and 30s doing all the partying and yes, going crazy. Getting it in. Doing all the craziness, exploring, yeah. you know, you know, whatever. Whatever it is, your career. And traveling. And now, yeah, traveling. And now you're kind of spent. You kind of don't got nothing in the tank. Right. And so now it's the decline. But for you, 40 has been just from my observation on the outside looking in. Yeah. 40 being the new 20 has appeared to be so because what we think is happening for people at 20 years old, 21 years old, Mm -hmm. it looks like is happening in your life still, not just beginning at this age you are at 39 or 40, but... right. Since you've been in your 20s and on the way, even now, seemingly, some could argue, ramped up even more than maybe. In your, <laughs> like what, yeah. what, what, what do you what do you say is the, the reason for that to be like you where other people are f- hitting a peak and now starting the decline part yeah. of their latter half? You look like you like popped a willy and now you like, <laughs> nah, I'm about to I'm about to willy down the entire <laughs> whole block like. Yo, I mean, honestly, and, you know, I know it's going to sound like cliche, (laughs) but it's really, it's a God thing. You know what I mean? It's God motivated. It's God driven. Um, It's really about living in your purpose, Uh you know, waking up and being happy with who you are, knowing who you are, all of that. So I don't even think about it as, oh, I feel like I'm 20. I mean, I get carded all the time. People always think that I'm 19. Yeah. But. It's, it's the blessing of being wise enough at the age that I am, because I, I am my age, but being wise enough to know that even though I'm this age, that doesn't mean that I can't do the greatness that I'm called to do. So it's really not about um, me trying to be a 20-year-old or be um, representative of that age group or anything like that. It's just me... Um, wanting to live my best life, being the best example to the people that I inspire. Um, as a mother, I want to, you know, inspire my children also. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really just about living my truth, to be honest. So, I mean, would you say, because you mentioned, you know, being at this particular stretch. Yeah. You're... <laughs> you know, you have... You, you're, you're, you're still driven. You still have you know, kind of this this energy. Would you call it something that's like a, a new wind or a second wind? Or 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 like basically what I'm getting getting at, is this something that you've kind of carried consistently from the the age of like you would say your twenties to now? Or has it been something that propel has gradually increased from that time? Or would you call it an entire new wind altogether. Okay. It's something that's completely actually different from the first part of my, you know, life and my journey as a creative. I wouldn't what necessarily would say that. I mean, I've been creating since, according to my mom, since I was two. Mm-hmm. So creating is just a part of who I am. I was coming out the womb doing it. You know what I mean? But what would you say? What's what's the, if there's any difference in, let's say, from your 20s yeah. to now hitting would, 30, what, what, what's different about your creative? Um... I would definitely I get what you I yeah. get where you're going. Um, I would definitely say that it feels like this is like a, a new lifetime for a, me. A new level. This yeah. Is a, this is a new thing that's happening. Here. Yeah, because I would say I was going on a certain momentum. I went to, you know, I went to undergrad, then I went to grad school and I was married and yeah, I had yeah, children. Yeah. But once I divorced, I feel like I lived like that was a different lifetime for me. Like mm. I was not a total different person. But yeah, yeah. when you're a married woman with children and you're educated and you're going a certain track and then things kind of shift to something else, then you, well, you don't have to. But for me, I felt like I needed to find what I, what my new life was going to be like. What what does Shay want to do post-divorce? What What is Shay yeah. going to do, you know what I mean, after all of this aftermath? So that's where I'm at. So what 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 year was it? How old were you when you got divorced? How old was I? Maybe thirty one. Okay, 
So you you had hit thirty. You spent a good, I, I, well, would you say a good portion of your twenties then then married and kind of juggling all these those yeah, things. Yeah, right? I would say so. So, I mean, do you do you think this new? Do you think this new kind of phase you are in and like kind of the evolution of your creative process and the ways that you're driven now, would you say your experience being married or being a mom even shaped the now? Um, I would definitely say um, it played a, a good like portion in who I am today. Yeah. Because if I wasn't a parent, if I wasn't a 90% parent, and, you know, if I didn't get divorced and, and I'm now ex-wife, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I think things would be, a, you know, just a little bit different. But I still had the, the thoughts and the drive to do what I am doing now. I just think maybe the approach might have been a little different. Yeah. And you said you're not. Uh, <laughs> you Here said, we go. You said, you said, <laughs> you said you're not a, a baby mama. You're an ex-wife. That's right. You You make that. In, distinction intentional distinction yeah um what's 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 the difference because because one would say <laughs> hey if i'm if i'm your ex-husband shay yeah and we have children together yeah and and i'm referring to you with considering my children regard you you're you're my children's mom you're my baby's mom nah. you're my baby. why why are you why are you an ex-wife and not the baby's mom um well first of all i feel like baby mama that has a negative connotation off like off the muscle. Mind you, quick not to interrupt you. There's there's a <laughs> episode literally about babies mamas that uh, really? that my wife released recently on her podcast. Make sure you guys check that out. Gloss with Isis. You can find it in my in my link tree right at the top. Uh, okay. Meet the wife. Um but yeah, so you said it has a negative connotation. Yeah. Okay. So is that kind of your only reason for the distinction is because, hey, I don't want to be associated with a negative connotation. No, not necessarily. But for me, I'm a words person. Like, yes. I, I enjoy words. I use words. I feel like words are power. So when you're utilizing a word, I want to make sure that it's utilized properly. Okay. So to put me in a box and, and define me as a baby mama is inaccurate because I, I spent most of the relationship as a wife. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, we were together four years before we had children. Mm. So to say, oh, you has baby mama, I don't even know what that means. Like, that's not relatable to me. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, I didn't, I didn't have a child until four years into the marriage. So your thing is like, listen, I got married. Yep. I did, I did, I did everything I was supposed to do. Yep. I got married first. Was married for a number of years. Then we had these kids together. Yes, in that marriage, mm -hmm. and then now for whatever reason we're divorced. I am an ex-wife. Yes, that happen to have children, and we just happen to have <laughs> kids together. Yes, yes. Yo, that is so crazy. But I've never thought of it that way. Yeah, because think I about totally it. I totally get it. I totally get it because the you know the whole baby mama thing title you know. T titles carry carry weight. They do. Um, but it, interesting of a perspective, though, right? Is, yeah. And this is only because I've tuned into this other episode. Yes. So you you got to listen. You got to yeah. listen to this episode. Is there's 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 a perspective that exists that says you know what? There are individuals who they wear the baby mama's title as like kind of a badge of honor. Like okay. it's a it's an honorable thing, and it's and it's really because what I feel is the sentiment of of the different perspective is is that we're taking it's it's those mothers taking control of the title of redefining it okay for themselves okay so i'm sure you could relate to that so it's like the n-word basically like <laughs> like oh we remixing this you know what I'm the n-word <laughs> i'm just saying Did you compare that to the n I you compared baby mama to <laughs> Well, yeah, I feel like because you read, we're redefining it. Like we use it loosely yes. because okay. you know what I mean. Like we got control over we it. We taking control over yeah. it. We we writing the narrative. Now. We re re rewriting it. Like this is where we at with it. And listen, it's no disrespect I mean, to the people, baby be, mama. People wasn't being enslaved with baby mama. No. <laughs> well, what they might have been though. Ooh, mm. That's another. That's a whole that's another, another episode. <laughs> I'm just saying. Maybe I might hear that on Unicycle Podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Listen, 
I just feel like if you're going to put me in a box, you're going to title me anything, make sure you're using the right titles. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's, and that's... And that's all I'm talking about, really. And that's and that's really commendable because we don't find young women, uh, you know, at the age you were when you, you know, met your husband or got married or whatever. That, right. That, d- that have the right setup, you could call it, right? Like, yeah. Like, I approached the, I approached the marriage the, the way I was supposed to. Yep. We got married. We gave ourselves time to just yep. have, Premarital counseling, all that. Well, just time to spend with one another. Yep. Like, we didn't, like, rush and... Right on the wedding day, you know, we ended up pregnant and got, you know, having kids. Yeah. Like, we had the time. It was about three, four years before we had kids. Yep. And then, you know, for whatever reason, the marriage... Dissolved. Dissolved. Yep. You, you want to be able to... It's honoring reflect, the marriage. You, you want to be able to reflect and look back on that honorable thing. And yeah. not only for that, but also kind of almost in the way where... Your kids know that yeah. I that are growing up. Like, look, I'm I'm not daddy's baby mama. No. I'm daddy's ex wife. Right, and you know I what? married your dad exactly. And it's also about is honoring the marriage, is honoring them, but it's a reminder to them that you guys weren't a mistake. Ooh. I'm just saying. Wow. Nah. You guys were planned. Wow. We wanted you. We loved each other. You were made out of love. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and yeah, there's no man. disrespect, like I said, to the baby mamas. Yeah, that's but awesome. sometimes it is a mistake. No, facts. Or 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 unplanned. I, yeah. I mean, hey, you could use a different word, you know, yeah. to make it to make it land. Make softer. make y'all feel better, but you know, yeah, it is yeah. what it is. Nah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I get that. I get that. Yeah. For you though, with with you know, you, you mentioned how being actually in that space though, as a you know, a married woman, a, uh, you know, new mom or whatever, yeah. and how that definitely has played an impact and influenced your creative process, who you are as an entrepreneur, yeah. you know, now. But what about the kind of letdown or disappointment that comes with the other side of divorce, right? Like, yeah. has that, you having the right setup, like you said, you, you like did the, did all the right things. I did the, you know, the celibacy, the premarital counseling, uh, you know, get married, even then waited a little bit before we started to have kids. I did all that. And yeah. then it ends in the solution. Does that play a role in how you move as an individual going forward in life when it comes to, relationships or even the idea of you know i because i'm i'm a divorced you know person myself right um and you know got remarried yep and so for some people it it influences their idea of marriage totally right that makes them say you know what it's not even because i had, it ain't even on the table because i had such a great setup that, yep. that still somehow failed it's not even worth pursuing again yeah it's not even for for you, has that adversely impacted your outlook on just the, the 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 institution of marriage? Like even to give it a shot again? Like is that even on the table for you? This that's a that's an awesome question. And to be honest with you, um, for me, I was deliberate and like almost to the point of like calculated in what that what that was going to look like for me in the future. Like I, I signed up for counseling oh, okay. as, as a, as a counselor myself, like, you know, I'm a marriage and family therapist myself. So I know the benefits of talking to someone and processing and all of that. So, and were you a, a like counselor yeah. that like, yeah. during the marriage? Yeah. Like at what I point? got my degree while we were married, like early in the marriage, I was in grad school. So you're this whole marriage and like family counselor yeah. in marriage, and somebody would argue like, of "Yo, course. you have a hundred percent success rate, right? Or closest as you can get to one hundred, right?" And it messes with your ego. It, but so to answer Did, your question, yeah, yeah. to answer your question, it it was it was very calculated on my behalf, and it was very deliberate that I processed this situation the best way I could. 
because I know how negatively this could impact me and my children yeah, and yeah, my yeah. future with dating and all of that. Because you're studying these things. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah, like, yeah. you know what? I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my time. I'm not gonna jump right into dating because yeah. I already know how I am as a yeah, demisexual. Yeah. It's very hard for me to connect with people yeah, yeah. on that level. So I wanted to be just mindful of that. So I, I went to the counseling. I did the counseling. I even had put my kids in counseling and they were young, but I wanted them mm. to understand what that process looks like too. Yeah. And we talk about celibacy. Um, I was celibate for five years after I got divorced. So, I mean, is that again, to, to my, to my question, is yeah. the, the use, do you have still a, a mindset that thinks marriage is good? For you, is it something you even desire? Um, I want, or, or are you like, you know what? It's not even worth it. There was there was a time in the beginning that I was like, eh, I don't know. Like this person has to be like magical. Yeah, yeah. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna take yeah, yeah. God to come out of the sky and you know rain down. Like that's initially you know how I felt, but once I was able to just deal with the stuff that comes along with divorce and being a single mom and just kind of being left with the bag, if you will, I was able to sort through that and see that, you know what? Everybody's not this dude. Yeah. You know that, what I mean? That's a really hard, it's hard reality to accept. Yeah. Because you really end up viewing the entire world through that one experience. Yeah. If, and I didn't want to do yeah, that. You had it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really, I mean, but the, the, if if you want to call it the good thing or the silver lining, yeah. In your in your situation, as as I like just reflect from what you're sharing, is yeah. that you had children at this time, yeah. That, that were able, it I would think you know to some degree, maybe they didn't know all the intricacies of how, right, of right, how right. you were processing and, and, and doing your therapy mm-hmm. post you know divorce, but they were able to witness to some degree your self care, right, and, and being just responsible with your emotional process and healing, being yeah. responsible with your healing. Right? Yeah. Right? So I imagine everything you've learned in your textbooks, you know, about, you know, fam- family and, you know, uh, marriage, you are able to implement that at least to whatever degree you can as the single mom right. now, right? Like, it's not that, it's not like any of the things, especially when you talk about the family part of the family and marriage. Like, it's not like everything no. else is like irrelevant and not usable. No. Like, Cause you still have a family. Of course. It's you and your kids. Yeah. So th- just the husband's removed. But right. it's still a family. Of course. So for all intents and purposes, the thing, the wealth of knowledge that you've learned, um, things that you know are healthy for just processing on an adult level, yeah. on a child's level. Yeah. It, it be, helped. It's it's fruitful. <laughs> yeah. It's beneficial. It's not like, you know, I wasted my time. Nah. No, Whether it's just in a marriage not. or in education, no, these things are implementable on an everyday basis. And and what ended up happening on my end with the healing process mm-hmm. as an artist, I had a divorce art show. Like I had a show that displayed work from when I was divorcing. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So I had like a whole show and I had artwork and paintings, wow. and I I wrote a book. You know what I mean? What was what was the name? Was that the name of the art show? A divorce art show? Um, like, what did you call it? What did I call it? I think oh, it was the selfie show because it was a selfie. Because what happened, and this is, I'm I'm gonna talk about it, and I know people that follow me probably know this story already. When I was going through my divorce, um, there was a cousin of mine, and he was also divorcing for the second time, mm-hmm. and he was helping me through, and I was having a hard time, yeah, yeah. and it was just horrible, but. He, in the process of me finding out that I was getting a divorce, he also found out, and he didn't take it as well. Mm. And we was trying to build this app where people take selfies for 90 days um, up until they get divorced, because that's usually the time the frame. Period, yeah. yeah, it's usually like a three month period, which for is state of Connecticut, right? But let's be honest, it don't. It, it took me a year to get divorced. You know, I've I've rec- and not only because I had to you know find out the timelines when, yeah. when I had to go to my go through my divorce. Yeah. Um, but did you know there are states where the the waiting period is a day? Really? No, I didn't know that. That's crazy. That is crazy. Like, granted, even like being in the thick of it, I was dreading the ninety days of or whatever. Course. But hindsight. 
you respect those 90 days. You really have, like, especially from a therapeutic standpoint. Oh, yeah. Like, you really want to make sure you're processing Making the everything, right decision. You know, the, you know, not just being emotionally charged. Yes. Because, I mean, if you could... Bro. Imagine if that was countrywide, like just a day. You know how much divorce would probably yeah, be? Yeah, like, it'd be higher. Way higher. I believe that. But I think in that 90 days, there, I think there's a good amount of people who they reflect, they calm down, yeah. cool heads, and they make it work. You yeah, know? they change their mind. So, yeah. So, um, back to my cousin. So, basically, he found out that he was getting a divorce. And, you know, so I'm trying to help him, but I'm all in shambles, too. So, we weren't... <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't really working out therapeutically, yeah, yeah. but we we did <laughs> both talk, in shambles. It was yeah. shambles, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but we did talk about collaborating and you know building an app that allowed people to post every day, like a selfie in the morning and a selfie at night, just to kind of show the progress of like, okay, I made it through the ninety days. Yeah, what yeah, I look yeah. like, what I look like now. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, my cousin did not make it like he committed suicide oh and God. he he killed his wife sorry to hear that yeah so it was a murder suicide wow. situation so for me to honor him and honor what we agreed that we would mm. do yeah so a moment of silence for my cousin because for real Mm-mm-mm. um but yeah so that happened and i was devastated you know and I didn't want to just act like it didn't happen and we didn't have this agreement and we didn't have this bonding time. So I wrote a book and the book is called Blood on the Pages, The Sideways Heart. And it's just really talking about the five stages of grief when you're going through a, a heartbreak and a divorce because people don't talk about it. People don't talk about it the way they need to. They're like, oh, you know, you're beautiful. You can get over it. And, yeah, yeah. you know, you'll find somebody else. And it's not that simple. It ain't about me being <laughs> yeah, beautiful, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It's, it, and yeah. I don't know who said this. And, you know, I, like, I ain't taking the credit. But this this person basically said it's like going on and going forward with your life missing a limb. Yeah. You can live. Yeah. But now you got to figure out how to work your body without this extra limb. Yeah. And it's really like that. And for a time, it's like this reminder that the limb is not there. It's always a reminder. Yes. And so that thing becomes normalized and you really And then you get flow. your little, you know what I mean, replacement arm. You just, yeah. you could feel the sensation of it being there. Yep. And it's not. Mm-hmm. Like all that stuff. Like even when I had my surgery... Um, my four surgeries for this whole blood clot, you know, thing I had. Yeah. Um, I had to, I had to stop using my right arm. Um, mm. because just the just the slightest repetitive motion would cause swelling in my right arm. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. So I'm talking about even to like brushing my teeth. In yes. A motion like this. Yes. Right. It would leave my arm feeling like I was lifting a fifty pound weight. Right? Oh my goodness. So the muscles would be that pumped with blood and tight. From yeah. Just brushing my teeth. So I had to switch hands, right? Yes. And I remember being in front of the mirror. And even though I have the brush in my left hand, <laughs> yes. right? You still moving your arm. Mm-hmm. The sensation of wanting to move this limb. Yep. Even though I can't, was still there. Mm-hmm. Uh and so I ultimately, you know, it just was too just irritating to me. Yeah. And so I would just, I would just tough it out, you know. Yeah. Uh, and just, you know, let my arm, you know, you know, de-swell or whatever. Right. Afterwards. But, Thaw out. But yeah, just let it cool off <laughs> afterwards, have a cool off period. But I can imagine like overlaying that same phenomenon with yes. your heart and emotion, mental strings mm-hmm. like attached. Yeah. To a person, man, that's really, really, really impactful. Yeah. I mean, so if you had to just it with one one answer, yes. one one word answer. Okay. Would you would you do marriage again? Yes. Yes. Okay. You if, know what's funny? Hold on, wait, wait. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> if you can give me one sentence okay. as the reason why, what would that be? Why is it on the table again for you? Because I deserve to be loved. Come on, somebody. That's right. She said, I deserve this. Yeah.
I'm not gonna let nobody, you know, take that from me. That's fire. <laughs> You're so silly. No. But for real. Because I wasn't expecting that as your answer. Yeah. I deserve this. I do. I'm an awesome person. Somebody, some there's there's a woman out there that needs to hear that. All right. You deserve it. You woman out there listening. Yes. You deserve this. Yeah. You deserve that. Yeah. That's your why. If you're sitting there listening to this this episode, mm -hmm. and this is you, you're post-divorce, I don't know how many years ago you divorced, and you are in search of a why bother. Yep. I'm here. You I'm nine it. years out, you, and I still feel it. like I deserve it. You deserve it. Yep. For nothing else. Yep. What is the, that being your mindset, mm -hmm. is, there, is there any different approach that you... And you're present, you know, I don't know if you're presently like, you know, dating uh, these days, but it's, is it a different approach that you would take since you had this setup that to us mm -hmm. quarterbacked, it yeah. looked like it was, I still, my personal opinion, I don't think anything's wrong with it. Yeah. For you, is there an approach, would, do you think it was something worth even changing in your approach? Or do you think it was just, no, that, that wasn't my person. It was just, that's, that was, that's who that, that person is with the right person. My approach is fine. Right. I, I, were you, are you comfortable with your approach or would you change I, your approach? I think the approach was beautiful. I wouldn't change anything. Um, in that time that I was divorced and my mantra was like, this is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Yeah. You know? So, and, and, and I don't, and I know people may have their opinion about how I have approached it because, I mean, they probably yeah, yeah, read my yeah. books and they're like, oh, because yeah, yeah, I got yeah. the devil wears Nikes yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it talks about she got some crazy stuff out there. Yeah, she got some crazy. but it's the truth, and uh -huh. I don't, I don't know nowhere else to live. So you're fine with your approach. I'm, a, I'm fine you're, you're with not, it. You're, you're, you don't feel like it was something that you had aired in your approach nah. from the from the foundation. No, because it worked was, until it didn't. And I think, and I think the I think, I think people, I think people make the mistake of having a good foundation. And then somewhere along the way of building on it, something doesn't work. Yeah. And then they question the foundation. Right. And so given in a different way, yeah. it's almost like I've heard it also from, a you know, some motivational speaker um, where like people have, uh, I've heard it be say about like New Year's resolution. Okay. Like, right. Yeah. Like, like, no, you don't need a new resolution. No. Last year's was good. Yeah. You just need new commitment. Right. To the same resolution. Yeah. The, the same beginning that, that was already in place. <laughs> right. There's nothing wrong with it. Why are we changing it? You you need to just stick to what is the, the goal the, is. The, 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 the foundation is. What's the goal? What yes. you know, st stick into it. Commitment is what needs to change year to year. Recommitment. Yes. yes. If somewhere thought the last year you fell off, yeah. what are what are we recommitting to this year? Right. We you know, the the, the foundation doesn't have to change. No. Always. But yeah, that's 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 I'm I'm happy to hear you yeah. say with such a because with such a if I just heard about you like yeah. a story about yeah. like your setup I'd be like oh all day she's like she's done, done. That. Yeah. yeah she like what what she she did all these <laughs> steps and like oh yeah she's definitely all set yeah 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 but I respect that but the foundation is God though which which is why I say right it can't fail don't, me don't don't change that yeah uh, you know what I mean like yeah. But it's that it's that thing where we see sometimes the the actions of other people, yeah, and we let other people's actions say something about who we are. Yeah, it's true, and, and that's that, and that's that's a crazy like really dope thing I took from therapy I had. Mm -hmm. You know, both you know during the divorce process after divorce is is that you can't let other people's actions say something about who you are. Yeah, and we do that too often. Mm -hmm. If if you know if I have you know a you know do you know beating on me at home it, it internally subconsciously i it i tell myself i'm i'm not worth it or i'm right. or i deserve to be beaten or i'm not beautiful enough if yes. i have, if i have a dude cheating on me yes. it must be because i'm not worth staying with or yes i'm not satisfying or, or yeah, whatever yeah. it's always something that you look at is wrong with you right and we got to change the bless, narrative on Bless that. God for that therapist that gave me that gem. That yes. nugget. It, that was life-changing for me. Yeah. Because that's what I was doing for mm -hmm. a long time. Like, not, blaming, not just... Blaming, not talking about my. I'm not even talking about my marriage. I'm talking about just in life. Yeah, I get it. Everybody. Like, yeah. you know, 
it was always through this lens, like, what is wrong with me or what am I doing that's mm -hmm. making other people other people do this, this, this. Yes. And, and it's yep. like, no, people do what they want to do. Every day of the week. That doesn't have to have anything to do with you. Nope. It's just who they are. They yeah. do this, they do that, whatever. So yes. Free Lunch Podcast is always about free food for the soul. Yes. And so we end every segment with giving the people something that they could be that that could that get edify their soul with like lunch edifies the body. Right. So from from your time transitioning into 40 yeah and still being like popping a willy <laughs> yeah. pop, popping a willy on on dabbing on these foods out here. Yes. I don't know if y'all y'all kids out there still say dab. But anyways, um right. from that to then also carrying this, you know, mission as, you know, no, I'm an I'm an I'm an ex wife, not a baby's mom. Yep. Plethora of all of that. Yes. Coming into making forty the new twenty for real, for real. Yeah. Living it. In real time. All of that with the with the kids. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and my doggy. With the divorce. Like what's <laughs> what's the thing that you want people to to take away from this podcast? Honestly, it's really about staying true to yourself. Like you said, not allowing outside forces to change who you are at your core, not allowing abuse in relationships to change who you are at your core, not poor decisions that people have made in their life that impacted you to change you. Like you really had to come back to the, to the ground of it and be like, yo, yeah. I am who I am. And I love who I am. And God created me to be this dope person. Mm. And that's just what it is. Yo, she said, I deserve it. Yes. Yo, I'm going to be <laughs> bugging right now. And I'm only bugging because I usually think of the dope answers. Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't see that one coming. It's true. I deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah, I do. You deserve it, y'all. Yes. Yo, freestyle gospel, the yes, real sir. free. Your girl, Shay Lamora. Yes. ShayLamora.com. Yes, sir. Yo, tell the people where they can find you, Shay. Listen, if you type in C-H-E-L-A-M-O-R-A, you're going to find me everywhere. Instagram, Cause Facebook. Because there's, no, there's nobody with another name. Duh. There's nobody with another <laughs> name. Yo, she got some dope art. Yo, dope art. Yes. Uh, dope. She's a serial creative like me. Literally, and, I got my lipstick. And your, art, and your art is like in the, in, yeah. the, in, the, in the news, in the paper. Yeah. Now. So I'm a public artist, too. Could could you uh, real quick just like tell me like more about that particular thing that that's happening now with the mural? Like, well, um, they they chose thirty three artists. I'm among the top in Connecticut in Hartford. Oh, in Hartford. well, in the Greater Hartford area, I should say. Uh -huh. So the Greater Hartford area, um, they chose thirty three artists. I'm among the top nine artists that they chose to do the bus shelters. So okay. we're gonna be revamping those with our art, and it's gonna be along Albany Avenue. So they're just revitalizing that whole area, gutting it out, making okay. it, you know, we beautifying it yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Fire. Loving it. Yeah. Loving it. Freestyle gospel. Yeah, the real free. Thank you for having me. Free lunch, free food for your soul, y'all. Yes, sir. Peace.